Hello again, higher algebra students, back here with the fifth lesson of unit 11, which is dealing with the parent function 1 over x. Uh, again, a lot of our work up to this point in this unit has been around adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing uh, rational expressions. And so just again, a reminder that with adding and subtracting, our main focus is that common denominator idea. With multiplying and dividing, our main focus is that need to factor and to look at simplify. So as we look at the idea again of a rational expression, the rational expression, the ones we've looked at have been something more like this and maybe adding or subtracting that to something else or multiplying these two together or whatever it happens to be. Um, but really all of these come from the idea of, of the parent of being one over X um, and the denominator not being equal to zero. And so we look at that and we look at what does this graph look like. So you think about what values of x might we use? Well, first of all, 1 over 0 is problematic because dividing by 0 is is uh, an undefined term. And so when we think about that, there's going to be no part of this graph that would be right along this y-axis here. Um, and so that that would not be a logical value to use. Now, what would be nice to use are values that make this y term pretty clean. So for instance, negative two for an x in this situation would be a y value of negative one half, okay? Because it would be one over negative two as one over x, okay? Negative one is a nice clean one here because one over x or one over negative one is just a negative one. Again, zero here, is undefined okay so that that is a value that really doesn't add a lot of value for us um, when it comes to the graph but we continue on with one and one over one is one one over two is one half and so on so as we graph this if we look at okay the point negative two negative one half would be about right here the point negative one negative one would be about right here uh, one one would be here 2.5 would be there you can see it would be interesting to see what's going to happen at 0.5 for x. Well, 1 over 0.5 is 2, so this would also be a point. Uh, 1 over negative 0.5 would be negative 2, so this would be a point. And so it's tough to tell here, but what happens is because we have a 1 in the numerator, we can never get to a y value of 0. And because we can never put zero in the denominator, we can never have an x value of zero. So what happens is essentially we have a graph that never gets onto this vertical line here and never gets onto this horizontal line here. So those are what are called asymptotes, which we'll talk about more as we move forward. And what you can't maybe see completely here in this picture is the fact that you see there's a little bend here and there's a little bend here and it's not real easy to see, but that is that is there. And what happens is that continues on in each direction, but again, doesn't hit that highlighted red area. So this, as this continues on, it gets closer to the y-axis, but doesn't hit it. As this continues on, it gets closer to the x-axis, but doesn't hit it. And similarly here and here. So because of these asymptotes, because it doesn't ever hit the x or y-axis, um, we do have an, a graph that's not continuous, okay? And again, it's, it, the breaking point is where the x is positive versus where the x is negative, which, of course, makes the y value positive or negative uh, accordingly here. So this is our graph of 1 over x. So what we are talking about with those red highlighted lines there on the, on the x and y axis were these ideas of an asymptote, um, and you have really three different types of asymptotes that we'll, that we'll refer to here. And one is a horizontal asymptote. And a horizontal asymptote is occurring at a certain y value, okay? Because the y value of this asymptote is the same all the way through. It doesn't go up or down at all. So the, its y value might be, in our case, the y value is zero. It was, it was the actual x-axis and the x-axis, the x value changes on the x-axis, but the y value does not. It's y equals zero. So this can be a little confusing, but just a reminder, horizontal asymptotes will be y equals. Vertical asymptotes, on the other hand, will be x equals. So for instance, 
the y-axis on the last slide was our asymptote, and that is at x equals 0. Again, the y changes values as we go up or down, but the x doesn't, so the vertical asymptote here is an x equals 0, and in general, it's always x equals. Uh, oblique asymptotes we will not discuss in this course. That would be asymptotes that end up being diagonal, as you can see here on the bottom. So we'll talk about these top two. And again, a common error would be to think that a horizontal asymptote, because the x axis is a horizontal axis, that it would be an x equals. But again, a horizontal asymptote means the y is constant. A vertical asymptote means the x is constant. And so that's what we need to think about moving forward. So here's kind of a summary. We represent asymptotes with dotted lines, which I didn't do on that original graph. I just highlighted it in red, but that's something moving forward. We should use a dotted line. Graph should never cross that line. And again, if it's horizontal, it's y equals. If it's vertical, it's x equals. Okay. So the asymptotes in this function that we already graphed, again, the way it would look then is my vertical asymptote at x equals 0 would be right here. And again, we dash it to try and make sure that it's not confused for being the actual line of the graph. Okay, so this is a vertical asymptote, and that is at x equals 0. Okay, and then corresponding, we also had that horizontal asymptote that we had in this graph, which here is a horizontal asymptote, and that was at, oh, not x, sorry, that was at y equals 0. And again, if you recall, our graph kind of looked like this and like this. And there were our asymptotes there. So um, x equals 0 and y equals 0 were the asymptotes. So what we're going to do in class is focus on a little Desmos activity looking at these action. asymptotes. But for right now, again, what we're really thinking about is with these equations, 1 over x was our parent function. And we have to think about now, moving forward, what moves our asymptotes to the left or to the right? And what moves our asymptotes up and down? So for instance, an asymptote that would move to the left or right would be if something was like this and like this, instead of being right over um, the middle of the graph. So this one clearly has been moved over to the right from our original 1 over x graph, which again looked like this up in the right side here. Um, so this one's been moved to the right. Um, naturally, it could have also been moved to the left. Something like this, and, the, and it could be even flipped and things like that, which we'll get into moving forward. It could also be moved up or down. So it could have been something like this and like this. So that one's been moved down, or if it's been moved up, and so it would be something like this and like this. So you can see, again, the idea here being that the asymptote, the vertical one is still the same, but the horizontal asymptote has been moved up in this case. Okay, so looking at this graph, 1 over x plus 4, as you can see here, the, the big problem on this one is going to be when x is negative 4. Okay, when x is negative 4 here, uh, that would be 1 over negative 4 plus 4, which is 1 over 0. So you can see any time that our x is negative 4, that would be a problem that we'd have one over zero in that situation. So that means that this right here is an asymptote. X can't be negative four. So our graph is never going to cross this dashed blue line. So this is a vertical asymptote at X equals negative four. Now, in terms of a Y asymptote, that hasn't changed here. Um, it's going to be on the x-axis because, again, with 1 over a value, we aren't going to hit a 0. So what ends up happening is that the red asymptote here at, um, God, I did it again, at y equals 0, which is a, a horizontal asymptote, um, that one will only move up or down if we start to add or subtract values at the end here. And we'll get to that here shortly. So... This new asymptote, again, what you can expect is to have this sort of bottom left 
uh, curve and top right curve in that line, but I'll just put in a couple values here. Um, if I have the value of x equals negative 5, then that would be 1 over negative 5 plus 4, which is 1 over negative 1. So negative 5, negative 1 would be one of our points here. Um, if I put in, say, uh, negative 6, negative 6 plus 4 in the denominator, that would be 1 over negative 2 or negative 1 half. So that one would go right here. And you can see what ends up happening if I put in uh, negative 4 and a half, it's going to go down a little more and so forth. So this is one of our lines. Oh, sorry, that should keep going up. And here's another one. This one, again, should keep going out. It doesn't get further from the asymptote. It gets closer and closer to the asymptote as we go down and as we go left here. And similarly, if I put in the number, say, negative 3, negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So that's 1 over 1 or 1. So negative 3 will be at 1. And you can imagine that that's going to continue like that. And again, it gets closer and closer to the blue line and then closer and closer to the red line. Uh-oh, shouldn't hit the red line though. So there's our new graph there of 1 over x plus 4. Now here's a situation again where we subtract the 3. So in this case, again, the 0 is problematic. An x of 0 would not work here because 1 over 0 minus 3 will at this point, this is already undefined. So that means an x equals 0 vertical asymptote would still be in existence here because x can't be 0 because 1 over 0 is, is undefined. But if we look at now the horizontal asymptote, what can't happen here then is we can't get a negative 3 because we can't get this value to be 0. Uh, and since that value can't be zero, when we subtract three, we th there never is a zero minus three to equal negative three here because this circled value can't become zero. Um, and so what happened here then is our horizontal asymptote actually moved down three units. And again, you can see this if we put in one, 1 over 1 minus 3 is 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So the point 1, negative 2 would be one of our points. And if we put in negative 1, so if I put 1 over negative 1 minus 3, well, that's negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. So the point at, at negative 1 would be negative 1, negative 4. And you can, again, see that what's going to happen is we could put in a bunch more points for x, but our graph would end up looking something like this. It's probably good to at least put 3 in, which of course I haven't done, but the 3 would be about right there and about right there. And similarly, on this one here, if I were to put in 1 half, well, that would be 2 minus 3. So um, 1 over 1 half minus 3 is 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. So there's, um, here's 1 half negative 1. If I were to put in 3, well, that's 1 third minus 3. That ends up being down here a little bit. Um, and again, we get this here. And again, what you can do is you can continue putting in values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and, and make this drawing a little more exact. But again, you should have those three, what I would say, cornermost points. Um, so you've got the one here, and then you can do the two, and you can do a one half there. Um, and just kind of, if we moved to the left or right three units, then you'd do the, um, you know, do the, add three to each of those, or subtract three to each of those from each of those x values, and just put those in. Um, so. So again, just thinking about those points that are closest to where those asymptotes cross, um, and then you kind of extend the arrows right up to the asymptotes in either direction, as we've done here and here, and then down here and here. All right. So one last one here. Um, this one you can see has both a horizontal and a vertical change to the asymptote. So what we can't have here is an x that equals 2. 
and x equals 2 would make our fraction end up being 1 over 0. So if the x were to equal 2, that would be problematic, which means right here is one of our asymptotes at x equals 2. x can never equal 2 here because we can't have a fraction that's 1 over 0. And we can never get this to equal 0, so we could never get the y value to equal 1. Okay, we can never get a 0 here, so our horizontal asymptote is just up one unit, which is the plus 1 here. And so again, I could put in, for instance, if I put in 3 here, I'm going to get a y value of 2. If I put in 1, that would be 1 over 1 minus 2, and then plus 1. So that's 1 over negative 1 plus 1. So that's negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. And so I'd have the point uh, 1, 0 there. And again, I could get a couple more points here. Um, that we could get values for, but I'll just, again, leave it at this, since we know the general organization of this function, and know where that kind of corner point, again, that's closest to the where the asymptotes meet right here, um, which, again, would be the points 3, 2, and 1, 0. And I could put in, again, an x of 0. I could put in an x of 1 and a half for this point right here. I could put in an x of two and a half. I could put in an x of four and get some of these other points as well. Um, again, what is nice is if you if you continue to go one um, down toward the, the edge of the graph, down into the right here and to the left here, and as you're going up and down, you just switch by a half because you're already, again, within one of the vertical axis here. So if you just cut that in half and put uh, the half marker here, um, which would be a one and a half x value, or a two and a half x value there, and then just find that y value, and that will give you again a couple more points for you to follow in your graph. But um, but really finding those asymptotes is your first key, and then getting that point that's closest to where the asymptotes meet, it would be your next key here. So thank you as always for listening. If you have questions, please ask.